As we approach the end of the year and prepare for the historic 2024 elections, it is crucial to reflect on the role of journalism in shaping our democracy, promoting accountability and safeguarding the public's rights to information. Now, this year has seen Ghanaian journalists navigate a very challenging landscape and threats to press freedom. Now, can journalists live up to public expectation is one question that will be asked, but also, is police recent renewal of relations with journalists routine or believable? The question then will be, can they protect us journalists? We'll find out in this edition of Hot Issues. I am Kemeni Amano, and today I sit with the president of the Ghana Journalists Association, a man who visibly makes the president of Ghana uncomfortable after calling him out to his face on Galamse. He openly blacklisted MPs who have returned tail in hand to make amends. But will that be enough to ensure journalists can discharge their duties, our duties, as we head into the December elections? My guest is Albert Kwabna Jumfo. Thank you so much for joining us here on Hot Issues. Thank you, Kamini. When you look at, you know, media coverage of the elections right now, what would be your assessment? Okay, thank you, first of all. First of all and then, um, once again, the greetings to your cherished viewers and everyone watching us. I believe that um, <clears throat> we all need to commend ourselves for a good job done uh, so far. So good. Um, it hasn't been um, hundred percent. It hasn't been um, um, bad. Mm -hmm. um, we are doing better compared to um, what has been happening during election year, where right. the media is seen to be uh, heightening tension mm -hmm. and inciting fear and all that. Uh, this time around, I think the media has been very professional. Mm. Um, we have been very... Um, um, we've, been, we've been discharging our duty um, without fear or fever. Right. We've been very articulate and uh, informing the populace or the citizens, uh, shaping the ideas, thoughts of the, of the people of Ghana to make mm -hmm. an informed decision. Mm -hmm. Uh, regardless, you know, there are, there are, there's been few uh, recklessness. And I want us to look at those problem areas. Mm -hmm. You have identified them. What are those areas that are pro continue to be pro problematic for the media? Oh, of course, um, there are, there are, there is, is, is the usual challenge, the usual um, issue of self-censorship. You know, most of this, uh, most of uh, our colleagues or media practitioners uh, works uh, find themselves in an environment which is being controlled by political, um, should I say, uh, individuals or mm -hmm. politicians, because um, we have always we have raised the issue of uh, ownership, media ownership, right. and media ownership uh, has been shredded in secrecy. I think when you mm -hmm. uh, we always uh, call on the NCA to make media ownership which are very open, transparent, and not opaque. Because the people of Ghana, if we really uh, believe in democracy and we see the media as the, as the, as the uh, should I say, the media is the, is the main uh, key to democracy. Mm. Because when, without media, democracy cannot thrive. Our, our core responsibility or one of our core constitutional mandate is to deepen democracy, ensure accountability and good governance. And so if we really believe in democracy and we really believe in serving the people mm. and letting the people know what is actually happening, I don't think that uh, covering the ownership mm. or maybe making the ownership structure of media houses is, is, is really... Uh, but this has been a challenge. Yeah, I, so, I mean, which brings me to the question, is it the case that... Um, Journalists are not able to separate their professional work from the owners of the business for which they work. It, 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 is, it is far from that. You see, you, you, you may be professional, but there's an issue of job security. 
sometimes, like I said, that is where we talk about self-censorship. Mm -hmm. You know, there are things that TV3, that media, private media houses can actually embark on, can do, that state media house cannot do. You understand? Yeah, I mean, should, should that be the case? Of course. Uh, that shouldn't be the case. But I mean that that brings up, even though we have come so far, um, we, have, we, have, we are deepening what we call press freedom mm -hmm. and then defending uh, uh, media pluralism and all that. What is left for us to do is to ensure that journalists are able to discharge their work, mm -hmm. you understand, yes, without any fear of intimidation, attack, or even losing their job. Mm -hmm. Because job security is key. And that if I know that I'm doing a professional job, I know I'm doing what is right, but at the end of the day, I'll lose my work. Mm. Have, Nobody, you, have, you, uh, you know, have such cases come before the association? Oh, where, yeah, we have recorded few, but I, I, I don't want year? to raise it that. Yes, we have recorded few where mm. uh, a journalist has to lay down his tools because uh, it wasn't controlling to um, um, the pressure from the, from the owner mm. to do, to tone a certain a certain line or a certain way. I see. You see, and so and so we we have we've had from where we sit, some of these uh, cases come to us. So, but like I'm saying that uh, under current media landscape, mm -hmm. Ghana is seeing our media pluralism, our uh, 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 press independent, the the freedom and independence of the media, which we all know we have jealously guard yeah. up to this time, we are, is really growing. We are doing well to still maintaining and protecting uh, this mm -hmm. freedom mm -hmm. because this is what our forefathers left for us. Regardless of maybe few attacks here and there, right. regardless of few uh, threats here and there and all that, that has been uh, an impediment or an affront to press freedom. The few challenges is that mm. most, I believe that the political affiliation of journalists is one major problem which is actually affecting... The political uh, affiliation, affiliation of the independent journalist. Independent journalist. Mm. You know, it's one thing which is really affecting uh, our, our professionalism. You know, because, of course, um, if you are lying, me, we all know that even in the Western world, mm -hmm. in a Western country like US and all, the, the, we have CNN uh, toning the line of uh, Democrats, we have Force and other uh, uh, media houses toning a particular line. But then... In all that, just make sure that you are professional, even if you are lying. Do, do you see that journalists in this country who have openly aligned to a particular political ideology or political party, you know, maintain their professionalism? Yes, yeah, some do. Like I said, some do. Mm -hmm. Because regardless of, your, regardless of your political affiliation or alignment, you have... The, the constitutional mandate to remain professional. You have the, in fact, even your personal conviction. You see, if the journalism, journalism is a core, it's a ministry. And for that matter, mm -hmm. if you find yourself in it, it's like a, a referee, being a referee, and you are asked to go and officiate a football match that involves your country and other country, or a football match that involves your team and other team. At that time, on, that, on the field, you have to be professional. Regardless of what it is, right. we know we are. We find ourselves where where our commentators during football matches between Black Star and other country, when when brother we Black, Black Star or Ghana Black Star scores, you hear you can feel the the, the excitement mm -hmm. from their voice. But when it's the other way around, you see that even though they are saying the goal, but you can see that there is some kind of you know uh, trembling. You can see the soreness. You can see the mm -hmm. you know the tone is down. And all that. So even Indeed. though you are discharging, they are discharging duty. Emotionally, I know that emotionally you need to be able to control yourself. Mm. You need to be able to hold yourself up. You need to be able to make sure that you see yourself that we are the eyes, the ears, and the mouth of the people. So journalists are going to have to be emotionally intelligent you in the be, coverage yes, of the election. Yes, emotionally intelligent. Mm. We need to discharge our work dispassionately. We don't need to attach passion to it because mm. we, 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 like I said. The people looks up to us. Mm. We are we are shaping the ideas. In fact, the decision of most Ghanaians depends on what we put out there. Mm. So Ghanaians are looking up to us to shape their decision making. I see. To, to, to I, I mean, based on what you have said so far, election coverage is not only election day. Of course. Uh, it's it's already started. How would you score media coverage so far? 
I don't want to score, but I think that we've done ex uh, exceedingly well. Mm. I'll give I'll give ourselves very good. Are we being emotional intelligent like you have? You know, like I said, of course, there has been some few recklessness. Mm. For me, I, we need to admit that. And that we haven't gotten it 100%, uh, uh, should I say, we haven't gotten okay. it perfect. In okay. fact, there has been there's instances where we have to come out and even call out some journalists who have mm. actually uh, acted in a way we feel that uh, that is not we, doesn't align with the ethics of, the, the, profession. Ethics of the profession. With the ethics of the profession, indeed. So, for me, like I'm saying so far, considering the, 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 the tension, considering the euphoria in the country, considering um, what is happening, I can tell you that two weeks to election, if the media had been so, uh, so much reckless, mm. we've been very unprofessional. We haven't done, we haven't discharged our duty as is expected of mm. us. We would have been faced with a lot of, with even more tension or maybe a lot of chaos than what we are experiencing. The media has stood Real. on our feet. We have discharged. We have discharged work, our 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 mandate in a more professional way. We have we put. We so put, I mean, so generally, there is an improvement on media coverage of the election compared to 2020. Very, with so much improvement. Okay. So much improvement. I and see. And I believe that this time around, you can you could feel that the media knows what they are about. Mm. The media knows what 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 is up, what is ahead, and the media appreciates that this very election, uh, the stakes in this election. Are high mm. and if the stakes are high it takes us journalists media practitioners to make sure that we massage the nerves of politicians Very to well. be able to calm tension be able to calm tension and calm the nerves because if you see if we don't do that and we avail our platform you understand uh, to promote uh, hate speeches and insightful mm. uh, uh, remarks and all that we wouldn't find ourselves here. It could, it could be, be problematic. It could be problematic. Very well. So um, the police in the last few days has assured the media of uh, their safety and security in, in the coverage of the elections. Are we safe in our coverage of the elections? Um, I think that, first of all, um, this is long overdue. Uh, in as much as I want to commend the police for... Um, for yesterday's engagement and for all these assurances, I think that um, what have they sat down to do today? The media has come under severe attack. What has the police done about that? 2020 journalists were, were, were assaulted. Journalists were, were actually were, were injured, suffered collateral consequences for, for discharging our uh, uh, professional uh, duties or official duties and the police till today has not apprehended or prosecuted anyone a journalist was shot at the feet has gone through three surgeries already and still recovering cannot walk mm. and has become a has become disabled for what for serving mother Ghana mm. and the police is still looking on hasn't done anything about it this year, we have recorded a number of incidents involving uh, personalities, key personalities, ministers of state, mm -hmm. MPs, and so forth. What has the police done about it? Mm -hmm. So what, what we are saying is that we, we need to see actions. It's not the talk. We know the Ghana Police Service. We know that if they are, they are capable and if they really want to do, they really want to apprehend, they really want to make sure they crack the world, they will do that. Mm -hmm. So we will, we, will, we, will just, we will just wait, we will just wait and see. For us, we are, we are preparing ourselves. And let me say we have already prepared. We'll we talk about late, the preparation. Yes, yes we are. We are what, what action would you want to see from the police? The police, first of all, must show professionalism and leadership. The police must show that they are up to the task and they are ready to combat. The police must show, must show action by bringing... Um, by bringing those perpetrators, perpetrators of attack on some media personalities to what? To book. Mm. By now, the police should be able to tell us that, look, this, uh, this year or over the years, we, 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 based, on the, based on this maybe report before us, we've been able to arrest ABCD, we've prosecuted ABCD, this is the gains we are making. The police should be able to tell us. But here is the case. Just recently, a media house 
a reporter, a court reporter, was attacked mm -hmm. by a man of God, like supporters, mm -hmm. should I say, should I say, sympathizers of a man of God. Right. And to today, what has the police done about it? Formal complaint was lodged. Mm. Do, I mean, does it tell you that the police does not take attacks against the media seriously? Of course we have said that. Mm. We have said that, and we continue to say that. That police, because all of us come under threat, because right now it, it makes us feel very vulnerable. Mm. It makes us feel vulnerable. And so we take our security, we take our, our lives into our own hands. Mm -hmm. And that is why we urge journalists that, look, in, no matter what, first thing you should know, and that is what the IAJ Code of Ethics talks about, that you need to live to tell the story. In, we, in, as a journalist, we have sworn an oath of allegiance. And one of our oaths is to what? To live to tell the story. Because if you die, the story will not come out. Mm -hmm. And so we should take our personal security mm -hmm. and safety. Mm -hmm. I see. But, I, I mean, we've, we've seen journalists who have tried to do that. But then again, there's a lot of roughing from, uh, you know, please against journalists, especially when they're attempting to crowd control. Uh, how, how do you expect the police really to deal with this? Not on the day, but before the D-Day when the crowd is built. We, we, are, we, are, what, we are looking forward uh, to meeting with the police administration. Yesterday's meeting was with uh, selected media, mm -hmm. media uh, personnel, mm -hmm. editors, and some journalists, some senior journalists and all that. Uh, the police is yes to meet with the umbrella bodies or the heads of the media bodies. And I, I told them, yesterday I told the uh, public affairs uh, director of the Ghana Police Service, I said, look, if you meet, you are meet, you are, if you meet colleagues, senior colleagues and all that, at the end of the day, when, there, when the media comes under attack, when there is any uh, incident, or so when, when there are casualties on the field, they will call on the leadership, they will call on the GG, mm -hmm. they will call on the uh, uh, media umbrella bodies, mm -hmm. media coalition, what are you doing? The GJ, the GIBA, the Print Park, the, the new media and right. all that. What are we doing? People, the pressure will come on us. You have not engaged us. You haven't met us. You haven't, you haven't, you haven't, you haven't shared your, 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 should I say, uh, your plans, mm -hmm. vision. How are you going to provide? How are you going to protect journalists? How are you going to, you are going to ensure a safety or an enabling environment for journalists to be able to discharge their work? You haven't shared with us. So you meeting... Uh, and tested. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a one good step. But then it is important that you meet with the mother bodies. Let us know. Let's also share with you what we have. Let's share with you our statistics on mm -hmm. attacks. Let's share with you the threat, some of the, some of the fears of our people. Right. Let's share with you. And this is nationwide. We represent the, the nation. Mm -hmm. it not, we don't represent Accra alone. Because most of these attacks come from the regions. Right. And so this is something we want the police to walk the talk. We want to see the police rising up to the task and making sure that regardless of whoever is involved, whether the person is a political dog, whether the person is really is a statesman, mm -hmm. whether the person belongs to any group, whoever. Some people feel untouchable. Some people feel that they are above the rule of law. What can the police do to instill that kind in, of... In, in such a circumstance. In such a mm -hmm. circumstance. To instill that kind of confidence. Uh, in the media, what mm. can the police do for us to know that, yes, we are really in safe hands? Fair, as claim? fair questions you're asking of the police, but I can tell you one of the things that they plan to do is to have uh, liaison officers who can bridge the communication between media houses and, and, and the police. Your thoughts on that? Liaison officers to do what? To bridge communication between media houses and the police. So that way there is somebody in the center who is uh, exchanging, being a medium of communication between the police. And, and that will and, ensure the safety of journalists? Uh, well, I'm asking what you think. <laughs> no, you're also it. a media person. You're also a journalist. Would mm -hmm. that ensure the safety of journalists they are do, talking do about? Do you think it would? No, no. We are, we, are, we, are this, we are having a conversation. And as a member, I want to, to tell me that if you say they are doing this, for, first of all, for me, I think that we, I am not here to contest the police measures, whatever measures they want to put in place. And I'm not here to say that uh, whether their measures will work or will not work. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we are here to meet with them. They are here to share maybe there, there might be more to what we are talking about. No, but, but what I'm asking is, mm -hmm. is, yes. is, is a liaison person, officer, whatever they want to call it, significant to us at this time? My, my, my concern is the safety 
of journalists. My concern... So a liaison is not my, what we my, need. My I have not said that. My concern now, my priority, utmost priority, as the president of the GJ, is to ensure that all journalists go to the polls and come back without any casualty. But to ensure that journalists are able to discharge their work in a free, uh, safe environment without confronting any occupational hazard. Journalists were able to go out there and pick their report, cover, cover their news, inform, educate the public uh, before, during, and after the election without recording any casualty. This mm. is where I'm coming from. Whatever liaison officer, the, 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 whatever measure they put in place, being it uh, assigning liaison officer to media houses and all that, I don't know how can ensure the safety and security of journalists. But if it does, then we are in, we buy into it. But I don't know how that can ensure it, if you ask mm. me. But if they think that... Well, I that mean, you, you, result, you don't, you don't it, know because, yes. uh, you know, having enhancing <laughs> communication between the police and, and the media we have via always, a liaison officer yes. will, we have, not we have, we have, will not protect us. We have always, we have always spoken about the police the, the police relation with the media, especially their public relation. The, you, you remember that um, just recently, uh, I think starting from last year, we started being bombarded. We started getting calls and petitions from media houses, raising issues and concerns about the police PR. Uh, should I say yes? Because even from the regions, that now everything has been centralized. Now, now our regional correspondent, regional chairs, regional um, journalists in the regions who can no longer get information on issues pertaining to the region in terms of criminal issues or issues of concerns and all that. You go to the regional uh, head office or regional uh, headquarters of the Ghana Police Service or maybe other police service, uh, police uh, offices, like let me see, district or divisional offices, and they will tell you that you have to call national. Mm -hmm. And so, Information dissemination mm -hmm. was really ineffective. Was ineffective. Very problematic. Very problematic. It wasn't flowing. It was not flowing effective. And for that matter, the police, what they what they are trying to do now is to maybe to resolve that that let me say flow, information flow, by so doing assigning well, but perhaps a, a little too late if <laughs> if that is the thinking behind having a liaison yeah a little too late isn't for, it yeah for me like i said i i need i need a better and further explanation on that on this liaison officer thing but if you ask me if it is to ensure that there's a maybe free flow of uh, information or communication or the media who will fall there's someone the media can fall on in terms of information or maybe in terms we need the police to speak on an issue and so forth, then that means that is, that is uh, one good step. But in this or uh, during this period, critically, mm. as a leader, what I am looking at for my members is the safety and security. I mean, I mean mm. my members should be able, because look, sometimes we don't sleep. You'll be there and the calls, the calls come in late in the night. Mm. It's the president. You have attacked so and so. It's the president. They said you have done this. How many cases have you recorded? If I don't year? have the statistics. Mm. From, you, you are talking about this year? Yes, this year. If I, this year, um, I think the last time, I think when we issued the statement, we had recorded, um, I, think, uh, I think, between 13 and 15 cases. But Is that an improvement mm. or, you know, or a decline? It's an improvement because, in fact, uh, sorry, it's a, it's a decline. It's a decline. It. It's a decline okay. because you know uh, earlier this year we 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 have to put uh, some measures, some radical measures in curbing attacks on journalists, right. and that that saw the GGE uh, blacklisting. Uh, some prominent some, and indeed, and I would want us to look at you know some of the steps that you have taken throughout the year, mm -hmm. but then you haven't answered my question. Um, when you look at the engagement between the police and, and, and news media mm -hmm. uh, this week, do you get the impression that this is just routine and perhaps the police will not take this as seriously as would want them to? Like I indicated earlier, we are yet to meet with the police. No, but we have met with the police. You, the, the police have met, met, met with police editors and news media. media. We, we, we are your they, people. We have not met with the leadership. We have, we have lingering questions we want to put before the police. 
we would not, I would not, I wouldn't want to comment on the engagement with my editors and then uh, other senior journalists because I wasn't present, I wasn't there, and I'm not privy to the details, maybe what might have transpired. You're giving me, you are just giving me one day, Liz officer and all that. But I'm saying that Very well. when we meet with the police, all these issues will come to bear. We will get to understand as to whether it is just going to be a mere sh uh, symbolic or it's going to be uh, uh, some a rhetoric, mm. uh, whatever, uh, <laughs> just to just to win well, win win the confidence of the public. Or and, so and, forth. and we don't know mm. if that meeting is going to happen. It will it will happen. It will uh, you, you know, you hope that that meeting will happen. Oh, it, it will definitely. Until it is. until then, can we trust that we are safe in the coverage of the elections? Of course, of course, that this is one of the core responsibilities of the police, the security. They are, to, so they are supposed to provide what security for each and every individual in this country. Once we are citizens of the country, our protection, our security is in the hands of the police. And it includes the media. Mm -hmm. And so for that matter, I don't think the police is doing the media any favor. They are discharging their constitutional mandate. And so for me, I wouldn't say that um, um, this is uh, this is something new, and they must be commended. I only I only will commend them for at least uh, mm -hmm. coming out and at least for the engagement and for making steps to ensure that journalists are safe during uh, during uh, the election or before, during and after the elections. Very well. Yes, but as to as to whether, in fact, we want to see the actions. Mm -hmm. We want to see the actions, not talk. Absolutely. <laughs> We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll look at other issues that have cropped up over the year. Don't go away. Welcome back. Albert Kwabna Jumfo is my guest here on Hot Issues. He's president of the Ghana Journalists Association. Today we've been discussing the security of journalists and the coverage of the 2024 elections in comparison to four years ago, during the 2020 elections. In, in this country, there's a culture of calling the elections um, even before they are finished sometimes. Uh, you know, we, we, we do our best to make sure that it is as accurate as possible. But, but uh, what do you think about that? Is it, is it important? Call the election. Mm. Uh, it depends. But I think that for me, if that exercise... Um, it's really because for me, uh, from from the experiences of art or the, from from the pre, from from maybe the past election experiences, I would say that it is important to in fact you do your collation. Uh, it's it's life. Everyone follows. Leave the citizen to make their own inform uh, uh, adequate judgment. But calling election is not declaring election. That's different. But sometimes I believe that. The, the situation or confusion we find ourselves is that sometimes some of the media houses, some of our colleagues, I don't know whether out of excitement or sometimes um, when they fled off or whatever, uh, so that they forget themselves, and instead of calling the election, they declare. They declare. The There's a thin line between calling election and declaring elections. Mm -hmm. We don't have the responsibility. We don't have the constitutional mandate. We are not supposed to declare any elections. Mm -hmm. What, like what BBC, CNN did during the recent American election. Mm -hmm. Once the results are there, very live, it's on the screen, you're showing, you have done analysis. Now, okay, uh, out of 265 constituencies, uh, party A is having 52.3, but mm -hmm. party B is doing this. Now, the remaining 10 constituencies or 11 constituencies, uh, from what we know, this belongs to uh, the stronghold of party A, this belongs to stronghold of this, mm -hmm. from what we can confidently say that party A is leading. Mm, I see. Or party A uh, is winning the election. Mm -hmm. you see, but you don't declare. So it, it we is, can make projections. We can make projections, Indeed. and you can call. You see, calling it as a, you see, there's a thin line mm -hmm. without declaring it. Indeed. Because when you do that, because you leave the people like I'm saying that everybody watching, anyone who watches TV three, we'll see how it's we'll going. see how it's going. Indeed, but person can read and write and can understand what is being written there. Very well. Another thing we are going to encounter will be 
uh, you know, members of the public, sympathizers of certain political parties, members of certain political parties who have formed uh, perceptions and opinions about certain media houses. We've seen that happen in the past, in the 2020 elections, members of certain parties attacked journalists because of certain notions that they held. What do you say to these political parties, their members, their vigilante groups, their sympathizers? I mean, thank you so much. Uh, when I started, uh, I think uh, at the beginning of the interview or this engagement, I made mention that for me, the safety of journalists is my utmost priority. It's my concern. If I tell you I don't sleep because I am always thinking and finding ways and means to ensure that journalists go to their pools and come back really without, without being attacked. And for me, and for, and, for, and for the GJE that I lead, with, together with my national executive, this is our, should I say, our, our utmost goal. It's a commitment. Mm -hmm. It's a commitment to our members. In fact, we have a test case. In the next two weeks or 16 days, we have a test case. And as to whether we will pass, the, we will pass that test or not, time will tell. But I can tell you that we are putting measures in place. This week, the coming week, we are going to address the nation. We are going to address the media on our preparedness mm -hmm. for the election. The measures we are putting in place, what we are going to do to ensure the safety of journalists, to ensure that journalists carry out their work, peacefully, to ensure that at least we monitor whatever happened across the country. We are going to put it across, and we also want to, we want to, I want to take your platform to advise and admonish mm -hmm. party faithfuls, sympathizers of political parties, and leaders of political parties. Please, please. Just yesterday, or three years ago, the opposition uh, party held a press conference, allaying some fears of region and all that. Yesterday, the, the, the ruling party also at the counter press conference said, hey, you guys want to cause freedom in our uh, stronghold and all that. Who carried the news? It's not the media. So that should tell you the importance of the media. And so, but for the media, who was going to carry that news? And so if the media did that for you in carrying your message to the people, to the citizens, we serve as the bridge. We serve as the link between the government and the what? And the governor. The gov mm -hmm. And we serve as the link between these political parties with these institutions and the citizens. And so it is up to you to make sure that you hold that bridge. You hold it what? Firm. It must be firm to be able to what? To at least uh, 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 discharge its work. Mm -hmm. But then if you want to break the bridge... If you break it, how do you get to, the, to, to your people, to your populace, or to the citizens? So we advise, we admonish them. Look, if you, are, if you don't have the temperament, if you know that you don't have the, the should I say, the, the heart, the temperature, the temperament, whatever you will call it, to accommodate journalists during this election period, we advise you to stay away from us. I want us to look generally at the entire year. Uh, journalists in this country have come under attack despite our improvement in the World uh, Press Freedom I I mean, Index. Yes, yeah. Obviously a good thing, but are we free in this country after we have done our job? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> uh, Kevin, what do you think? Are we free? <laughs> are we free? I would say that, um, to the large extent, I would say that, yes, we are free. Ghana um, is seen to be one of the uh, freely independent uh, media uh, environment. In fact, when you, when you go to the African International, um, when you meet at the international stage, they see Ghana. In fact, most people look, they look up to Ghana because they know that for Ghana, considering where we are coming from and the history, uh, uh, the history behind mm -hmm. our 
independent. And we all know what our, our, our first president, Basajevo Dr. Kwame Nkrumah did. In fact, he was actually the initiator of, the, of this GGA. In fact, Kwame Nkrumah established the GGA, yes, and yes as African uh, Press Association, APA. And so, when understanding what we call media freedom, Ghana is on top. Mm -hmm. But then, as to whether our deeds, whether our deeds depict how they see us in the international community mm. is another thing. So, but I can but, tell you... But I mean, what do you think? Do our can, deeds show that... Oh, I think that um, um, at a point, mm. at a point, we're declining. We're, we're, we're losing guard. At a point, um, journalists came under intense uh, uh, pressure and threat. At a point, we, we, were, we were worried that the, the free... Uh, media environment, the one, the, the the one time free media environment has now have now come under severe mm. pressure. Where journalists will have to run for their lives, will have to now run for cover. Journalists will now discharge their work. They will, they will, you will finish, you you do your story, and then you have to be now find a way to to now protect yourself. You understand? Then uh, the, from attack and all that. This, I mean, could, could, that, got, could that be the reason for the improvement? The we, journalists now are self-censoring in this country. We, 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 no, we, we are not. I believe that the self-censorship, um, I would say that uh, for now, uh, most journalists, regardless of where they find themselves or where they are operating, are really, are really discharging their professional work regardless of the political village or regardless of the, the uh, should I say, the interest of that media house or station. But as indicated earlier, there are still, there are still few media houses who, who have actually played journalists under self-censorship. Mm -hmm. And now that, that one does not come through communication. No, but that they want, you yourself, as a, you yourself, you know the, the you know the chair you are sitting on. You know that this this platform is owned by somebody of interest. And the person's the person say that, okay, this is my direction. This uh, this is where I want you to. I want you to, you understand, this is where I want, uh, I want you to what, to focus. Now, what would you do? Will you, would you, would you add over your pants and your microphone? Mm. Will you lay down your tools and walk out? Or you sit in because you want to survive? This is the, this is the new self-censorship we are talking about. Right. Uh, gone were the days where the state media was under self-censorship in terms of editorial, what, uh, what, what, what might, what might, what, what might be heard and what might not be heard. And, but now, state media is operating mm. under no uh, self-censorship of fear. They take their own decision. The only thing is that there are certain hard news, there are certain, should I say, real-time news or some factual investigation or exposés that can be done by media general or TV3 that you will not get at the state media or should I say, uh, somewhere uh, else. Somewhere else. Or uh, maybe especially the state-owned media, mm. uh, Tony, the same line. And you know, I'm happy you brought up the issue of exposés because there are also those who believe that, well, you're free to do your job, but whether or not you're free after you have done your job is also a different issue. And we have seen it a lot this year, haven't we? That, has, that is what I'm talking about. That's why I indicated that the one free environment has now been no no I, I mean I want us to focus on this year yes. uh, because this is this is an election, election year, year yes uh, and it, you know things could be a bit more tense I, I think I think that I think that in recent in recent uh, past we have we have uh, encountered few of these things that mm -hmm. uh, at least after doing your job you have to run for cover and we have received a lot of calls in that regard but for me I think this year. This year, there has been improvement. An improvement on, improvement on, on the last on, election year. On the last year. election year, you understand. Okay. And even uh, an improvement on the previous years mm -hmm. where journalists have to uh, run and all that. I think this year, um, I can say that the, in the environment has been a bit conducive, running, even though there are still, um, um, there are still element, element uh, in the system who, th who still think that they are above the law, who still, think, who still want to take the laws into their hands, who still are going after the lives and mm. uh, threatening uh, journalists and media practitioners to do that. But I think that, for me, what, whatever that it is, we shall persevere. Mm. You see, we should not forget that. You see, we shouldn't 
most journalists, our forefathers, who sacrificed their life, who toyed to fight for the media freedom we're enjoying today, who are no more, who are no more, when they died or when they passed, the media did not collapse. So if you go after a journalist for doing his work, his or her work, for, for, for maybe uh, bringing to bear what you call an expose, mm -hmm. something you think that was supposed to be secret, something you think that was supposed to not to be out there, and that you want to go after such a person. Remember that in, Asante, in, in our Asante, or in our Kumasi language, when they kill tens of we ten journalists, thousands will still emerge. Mm -hmm. When they kill Indeed. one journalist, thousands of journalists will emerge. And so what I'm trying to tell you, we tell them, or what the information I want to put across is that we shouldn't think that we taking the life of a journalist will end what we call, will, will stop journalists from discharging our duty. We will continue to discharge and do our work professionally without fear, without favor, without uh, 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 any intimidation, and we will ensure that we will live to tell our story. Absolutely. Yeah, what's in hot issues? We'll be right back. Don't go away. Welcome back. This is still Hot Issues, and my guest in this episode is Albert Kwabna Jumfo. He's president of the Ghana Journalists Association. I've been discussing issues to do with journalists, their safety, security, and the elections. We have seen journalists in this country uh, defy whatever perception or real threats there, there exists mm -hmm. in, in, in our line of work. Of course. And you yourself also have had to you know, push the envelope a little bit for journalists in this country. Of course. One time you stood before the president and called him out for the lack of action on <laughs> Galamsi activities in this country. Of course. W what made you do that? I am serving, I'm serving a constituent. I believe that um, our position as the fourth estate of the realm has not been given much prominence um, in the last uh, four, um, should I say, the last 20 years, under the Fourth Republic. And I believe that, we believe that it is high time we take that position. In that time, we are recognized as the Fourth Estate. Because if you are Fourth Estate, it means that we are part of national development. In fact, when we read the Constitution and the mandate enshrined in the Constitution, our mandate as journalists, one, we are to be the watchdogs or the gatekeepers of the people's right. We are to be the watchdogs of the people's right. What right do we have? Mm -hmm. What are the rights enshrined in the constitution? We have the civic right, we have the human right. Mm -hmm. My brother. So if you are a journalist and you cannot protect the civic and human right of the citizen, then it means that you have to lay down your tools. And as the mouthpiece or the principal spokesperson of the, of the, of the, of the media, we represent the ears, the eyes, the mouth of the people. Mm. If I'm unable to bring to bear things confronting the citizen, things that has become a topical issue, which everybody is going to look. Some of us, we live in the Ganamse uh, environment. In fact, where I come from, I come from uh, uh, Takwa, uh, Takwa area. I am a wasa. And you see, in fact, you, when, you, when you are driving, when I'm driving to my hometown, you could see the effect of Galamse glaring at you. You could feel it. It is not, it is not, it is not far from me. You could feel it. It glares at you. And you could see that uh, this is how some greedy personalities or people, I don't want to say unemployed youth, are causing, the damage they are causing to our land. And all of us, we owe it, uh, at least we owe it that uh, responsibility, a godly responsibility to make sure that we fight to safeguard our land and environment. Mm. And so whatever I did was for a just cause. What's, for, what's a just cause? Yeah. What did the president whisper to you when you sat down? <laughs> I haven't spoken about that. That remains, that remains, uh, <laughs> you know, everybody, people will be calling me, Mr. President, so what happened? What transpired? What did the president say? At the right time, I will tell, I will tell God what the president I mean, said. When will, when will the right time be? Oh, when very soon. 
no longer in office. Oh, very soon. Oh, very soon. I, but I think, you see... Are you, are you self-censoring? Oh, nobody. You see, if, you, if, you, if I'm fighting for you and I'm self-censoring, I cannot even be here sitting here. I have what I, I, I always tell people that the, that responsibility or that burden entrusted my hands as the leader and the president of the fourth estate or of the media in this country. It's not, we, I didn't take it on a silver platter. I've been, you've imposed a lot of confidence and trust in me to lead a charge. And for that matter, the only person we fear is the creator, God. Nobody, nobody can place us under self-censorship. So what did the president tell you? The president, what the president says remains a secret. I will say it at the right time. He didn't, but look, I want he to, didn't look like but, he was but, happy. But I, want to, but I want to tell all that. What they are thinking, that what, they, what many people were reading, were reading his slips and all that. No, no. President, he, he, I, I wouldn't say he was happy or wasn't happy. He was always, he was, he was only, um, he was only making, in fact, a comment on one of the things I said. You understand? Yes. He was telling me, he was making a comment, but it wasn't, it wasn't in that detasteful manner. I can, I can, I can tell you all. It wasn't in that detasteful manner. It was just, uh, he, he reacted to one of the things I said. He never reacted to my, my speech, to my address. He, he didn't sound offensive. He wasn't confrontational. He was, it's like, it's like you say something and then you understand, you say something, then I'll come in and tell you that, oh, and I said, I don't want to hear you. You get the whole thing. <laughs> so, so when you look at when you look at the action, when you, when you when you watch the video, you may think that the president was uh, being offensive, or maybe mm -hmm. uh, he was uh, like you are saying he wasn't. Yes, even though I don't expect I don't expect him to be happy considering uh, the 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 nature of my address and all that. But then. It is what it is. Yeah, I mean, you must have got a lot of calls from the government after that. Oh, it's, it's normal. We, we, we expected it. You see, of course, mm -hmm. um, we find ourselves in a system where, you know, Sebiu, uh, in our local dialect, you see, Sebi Sebiu, Akran Kapiniti. You know, when uh, it's very difficult to speak through to power. And so when you are even speaking through and discharging your duty, at least, definitely, you get people who cheer you up, people who praise you, but you, get, you still get some backlash and all that. Eh? Calls will come and all that, but you just have to stand for it. You just have to be... So you got such calls from people from government questioning why you said that in the presence oh, of the, of the should president? I tell you, should, I, should, I, should I tell you, what about, uh, I tell you they were happy for me to say that. You're happy about but it. But you are not saying that because they were not happy. Because <laughs> it, it won't be happy? the truth. It was, it was actually misreaction. I would say that. It was a misreaction, in fact. Mm. Yes, some were, some when there, some were, some felt that, yes, uh, yes, we, it, well. it's good to speak. And, and, and for me, mm. um, I believe that this is a collective call, collective responsibility. Indeed. And I'm has become a canker. Mm. The menace, actually, the, the, the effect. Uh, Kamini, we are not seeing it today. Like I said, we are not seeing today. We live in Accra and we think that all is cozy, all is well. Mm. Go to the village, go to the... And for, you, know, you know what is worrying? The indigenous, the people, the community, the, 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 the indigenous of those communities, those Galamse area communities, are not benefiting from their own land resources. Even are, though they are most exposed. Even though they are most exposed, they are destroying their water bodies, we're destroying their farmlands, destroying everything, right. they don't, but they are not beneficiary, direct beneficiary. You know, anytime we bring up the issue of Galamse, there are some politicians who have put blame, and in fact, some people in, in, the, um, in the chain of, of, of the discuss who have put the blame on the doorstep of the media. Has the media not done enough in putting the spotlight on Galamse? We have, we have done more than enough to the extent that even some of our colleagues have come under severe threats. Some of our colleagues have come under severe threats. And so for me, what has the media done? The only thing I would say that the media went to sleep at a point. You know, when I believe that, you know, after the president 
as giving this word to the state somewhere 2017, 2018. And then this uh, Operation Hot, is that Operation Hot? Stop Galamsey. Mm. Operation Stop Galamsey uh, was actually uh, formed or came into existence and all that. And uh, the media went to sleep, especially, I think, after 2020. Bless you, we went to sleep. Because I believe that if we have constantly been following up and be bringing real time um, updates, real time information uh, from from the from the from this galamse uh, impunity, I think maybe we would have gotten somewhere. Indeed, thank you for coming. You're welcome. God bless you. Albert Jumfo is president of the Ghana Journalists Association. We've been talking about the safety and security of journalists and the coverage of the elections itself. I am Kemeni Amana. I'll see you same time next week. This is Hot Issues.